I'm going to knock car up here in Galway and uh, had a brilliant few days fishing, of course. haven't had a uh, GoPro with me, but I've not even out in the boat myself here now, so thought, why not? We'll just head out for a few hours and fish the wets, I think. When you're fishing a big lock like this, although you can fish the deep water for the Daphne feeders, the most productive water seems to be in the shallow water, so you're always looking for a bit of feature. Usually on the drop-offs, the shallows is where you find most of the bigger fish. And of course the smaller fish can, can be all localised around the shallows. But yeah, just fishing a uh, 10 foot fibre today. Not the best for what you would call a traditional Irish lock rod, but it's custom made. It's my father's rod, which he's made. And I've got the Hardy Ultra Disc UDLA 5000 with a Snowby XS Plus Kelly Blue Line. It's of course a 5 width. Yeah, it's been working well enough all week. You can definitely still land some bigger fish on it, even on the locks. But this timber boat is a far cry from the fiberglass boats we have. Always tend to find they do drift slightly better. They are, of course, a lot of people that usually live on these locks will have old, old style timber boats. They do drift the dream, especially with two people on the boat, of course. One person on the boat, you have to sit at the top to distribute the weight a bit better. There's a trout right there. Brilliant. And he's off. Oh well, only about a pound or so. He'll come again, I think he came at the top dropper there, which would be the Green Peter Mulder, without the red arse, of course. Which I got in Tommy Tuck's shop in Ugderard. You know, if you're looking for that flight, that's where you go. But a correct sure, the tug is the drug, as my dad would say. There's another one. Jagged them there, so I'll probably not come back. But like I was just saying, the tug is the drug. Took a fucking point flea, the May flea, good thing I kept that on sir. Number one on the boat. There we go. Only a wee skitter. Took a point flea. That's all three flays now. That's what you want. You want all three of your flays to be working. That was basically it for that night. I did get a few more trout to tick, but nothing was fully committed, so I decided to call it a night after about one hour. The following morning, me and my father went to an island called Inchigil, first the shallow region just prior to the island. We had a productive morning, but we did find it hard later in the day, which you will see in the coming video now.
This particular recording, I'll have to just speak over it because there was a bit too much swearing. Now, as you can see, the trout's jumping into the water, but we do think that was a different trout because this particular trout took straight off outside of the boat. And the reason for that will be seen uh, later on here. So, originally, I thought this route was huge the way it was fighting. The original tick, so out of control was the what you would usually get for a tick. Uh, that of an inclination that it might be foul hooked or either that it was a huge trout now it actually ended up being not a bad trout the trout of about two pounds or so however it was foul hooked just under the pectoral fan which would explain why it fought the way it did 